Clearly, piling up capital will increase the GDP per capita and per worker, but that is not innovation. <clears throat> there are technological and commercial developments new technological knowledge, new commercial knowledge that are the result of imitation and there are technological and commercial developments that result from innovation. <clears throat> Innovations that, uh, that are cutting edge, that push out the envelope, that push out the frontier. I would begin by observing that some countries are able to catch up and most of the time keep up uh, with the leaders in productivity. Through their uh, considerable technical education and technological sophistication. France would be an example, I think, and I think perhaps Germany would be another conspicuous uh, example. The example of France and of Germany it shows that some countries find a way to have high productivity without achieving much innovation. I think the French, by their own testimony, don't consider their economies to be uh, deeply uh, innovative. They would point perhaps to some pockets of innovation. France uses its widespread technical education and its broad technological sophistication to copy what proves to be successful in the more experimental, more innovative economies such as Canada and the United States and two or three, two or three others. The other trouble with the neo-Schumpeterian policy uh, and the trouble with France or Germany as a model for much of the world is that the participants in the French economy are quite unhappy, generally speaking, with their experience with the French model. A happy economy is one in which a large uh, proportion of the participants are engaged in their work, engaged in problems that it poses, engaged in looking better for, for better ways of doing the job, and, and, um, and using their own private knowledge to, uh, to, to good advantage uh, in their jobs. There are charismatic and famous venture capitalists, Kleiner Perkins, Draper Fisher Jurvetson, um, Bessemer Ventures, Sequoia might be the largest. And they have funded many dramatic, romantic companies with, with foundation myths that are, are widely told and repeated, like eBay and Amazon. It's also attractive to policymakers because, you know, well, United States is dynamic. United States has venture capital. We like to be dynamic. Maybe we'll get some venture capital institutions over here and uh, we can look at the United States and that's much easier than fixing things like improving our education, uh, removing the barriers to business as has been done in Croatia, um, or uh, breaking down trade barriers, or, um, or um, reducing taxes that discourage risk taking and, um, and um, diligence. First of all, it's small by any standard. If you look, just take, first take the industry, um, uh, National Tr uh, Venture Capital Association for the second quarter of 2008. They'll tell you 7.4 billion was invested by uh, venture capitalists in, um, in entrepreneurial companies in the last quarter. Even if you take that at face value, it's two tenths of a percent of GDP. That also includes small business administration, it includes investment arms of investment banks, and many other things that we might not ordinarily think of as VC. If you strip out the, um, if you strip out uh, those larger organizations, you may cut it almost in half. If you think which are the countries that have made this transition to peace, 
uh, and there is, they have moved into dynamic reactivation of their economy and into some kind of inclusiveness, I could come out only with Croatia and with El Salvador, two countries in which I have been uh, very much involved and I am very pleased that the uh, Prime Minister of Croatia is here, uh, Prime Minister Sanader, because it's a country that went through very rough times in the, in the, in the mid-90s and has made great progress, not only in the, in the economic sense, but also in the political uh, sense. And uh, I, I had the, the pleasure of, uh, I was invited by the Central Bank of Croatia for many years, the beautiful Dubrovnik uh, conference, uh, at the time where they, they were making, they were coming out of war and they were making the transition to peace. And it's very interesting for me to now to, to go over the, the, the new figures and I see the, the fantastic progress they have made, not only in terms of, of growth, but of uh, lowering unemployment, but also in, in terms of, you know, this, the problem with countries at war and coming out of war is that they cannot invest and most of the help of the international community is for humanitarian, is humanitarian assistance. And these countries find it very difficult to find a path of uh, invest, uh, investment. And I was looking that Croatia has uh, an investment of 32% of GDP, which is the envy of most uh, emerging countries that I know, except a few in the Asian world. Uh, most of the other countries in post-conflict, they have become aid-dependent. And by aid-dependent, I mean that they have a, usually aid flows to normal developing countries is between two and three percent of GDP. These countries, after 10 years or, or 15 years of coming out of war, they are still receiving 20, 30 percent of GDP in aid, and that's not sustainable. We, the, the international community has been supporting a model that it's not sustainable. I think it's uh, very important to to keep uh, an eye on the on the fact that Croatia is, uh, as uh, my colleagues mentioned, entering a new phase. Already been entering new phase for many years, but uh, uh, the historic aim we should achieve is still not, is still is still lies still ahead, and this is the membership in the European Union and NATO. Uh, four years ago, I invited the then opposition leader uh, for a historic uh, 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 cooperation. We installed in the Croatian parliament a so-called national committee to survey, survey and control the pace of negotiations. And I invited all, all parties presented in the parliament and also academic society, trade unions, all important uh, elements of the Croatian society to participate in this national committee. And the chair of the national committee was an uh, opposition leader. So it's been the unique example of an acceding country, no country of those 12 which uh, joined the European Union has had such experience. So this is something new and it's already known in the European countries as a Croatian model. So we cannot, we have no luxus to waste our time. So we wanted to, uh, to have all important elements of the Croatian society with all their substance to fight for those historic goals.